Murdo Dry Valleys in Antarctica, there is a five story tall waterfall that is leaking a blood red substance. It also happens to be home to one of the most alien life forms we have ever discovered. Five million years ago, when things were a bit, a whole bunch of seawater flowed into this part of Antarctica. Later, about three million years ago, the ice started to form again and glaciers slid over this pool of seawater. Also in there was all the microbial life that had been living. It's a little like if you took your goldfish bowl, sealed it up, put it in a bag and left it there for two million years. I don't think you'd like what you found when you looked at it again. But due to some fissures in the glacier, some of this trapped pool is able to flow out and the place where it starts to flow out is Blood Falls. So the waterfall turns out to be blood red for the same reason blood is red. It has tons of iron in it, and when it gets exposed to the air, uh, it turns what is genuinely a, a blood red color. So, you know, you notice it when you walk by. You're like, white, gray, brown, white, 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 brown, gray, white, white. Oh, blood red. It's a five-story tall blood red waterfall. The source of blood fall is thought to be this brine lake, something that was so salty that it couldn't freeze. That's at least 1,300 feet under the ice and a couple of kilometers away. Way. What's even more amazing is that the microbes that were trapped there, they're definitely still alive. Alive! Jill McCookie, the geomicrobiologist, which is an awesome title to have, published the definitive paper on blood falls. When they sampled this red sludge, they found that there were at least 17 different microbes living in it. How they survive turns out to be a pretty complicated answer, and we're not absolutely sure, but it goes something like this. They're trapped in there, so they need to be able to recycle their food source. What they think they do is that there are these sulfides, collections of sulfur, oxygen, and iron. And these microbes go and break them apart, and they eat the sulfur and are able to pull oxygen out of this uh, iron sulfide. And essentially, when they do this, the iron fits back in because there's a bunch of free-floating iron in there and just remakes little tasty microbe snacks. It points to both the extreme conditions that microbial life can live under and starts to help us build our tools for finding those conditions on other planets. But I think we can acknowledge that right here on Earth, there is life that is wondrous and weird and more alien than we really could have ever imagined. 